Hey guys, welcome back to Introduction to Kotlin. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be talking about abstract classes, interfaces, and inheritance. And we'll also touch on type aliases in Kotlin. Like Java, there are classes which you never intend to create objects from. And these are called abstract classes. So sealed classes are a type of abstract class. An abstract class is basically useless without some concrete subclasses from which you can instantiate objects. You more or less use abstract classes when you have general behavior and properties that you want to share across multiple different classes. A concrete subclass of an abstract class implements all of the methods and properties defined in that abstract class. So here's an example of an abstract class. This is our company class and it has two properties inside of its primary constructor. We have a name property and an employee number property. And then we have an abstract function inside of it called get earnings. Now keep in mind that not all members of an abstract class have to be abstract. In other words, we can have what are called method default implementations inside of our abstract abstract class. If you look at this company name function, you can see here that we're returning a string and all we're doing is taking the name that we're pushing through our company class and adding a space in ink on the end. So concrete classes or subclasses of this abstract class can override an abstract method's default implementation, but only if the method has an open modifier specified. So in this particular case, because we haven't added an open modifier to this particular function, any class that inherits the company class will also inherit this function. We can also store state inside of our abstract classes so even if an abstract class doesn't define any methods, we need to create a subclass before we can instantiate it. So here's an example of a class that is implementing the employee class. This one's called programmer and it has a first name property and a last name property. Both are strings and these properties are being taken from the employee class and that's why we don't have to define them as values or variables. We've sort of looked at this before, but the colon here takes the place of the extends keyword that you would find in Java. We also have the ability to override the val immutable property with var a mutable property. So if you look at this class A, we have an open value of A, which is a string. And then for our class B, we extend class A. And in here we define a property called private variable B, which is also a string. We override the property for A, which is that string from class A. And we give it a getter, which points to B, and a setter, which also points to B. So this kind of syntax would allow us to override the immutability of the property A inside of our class A. In Kotlin, we also have what are called interfaces, which are simply collections of related Related methods that enable you to tell objects what to do and how to do it by default. In other words, an interface is a contract that implementing classes must abide by. So here we have two classes, class A and class B. I've left them empty for the sake of simplicity. And then we have a interface called int a, and this has two functions, fun a and fun b. Now keep in mind that we could put the abstract keyword before our interface, but this would be redundant because interfaces are naturally abstract. The interface itself is sort of useless without any implementing classes. So let's create a class that will implement this interface. Here is class C and this extends the interface int A. And because we're extending the interface int A, we need to actually implement these two methods, fun A and fun B. We use the override modifier to label these methods and properties as ones that we want to redefine from the interface or if it was a class from the superclass. And this is similar to the at override annotation that you can make in Java. There are various rules that apply to interfaces in Kotlin. A class can implement as many interfaces as you want, but it can only extend a single class. The override modifier is compulsory in Kotlin, unlike in Java. And along with methods, we can also declare properties in a Kotlin interface. A Kotlin interface method can have a default implementation as well. So these methods inside of the interface do not necessarily have to be empty. We could add a bunch of logic that will be default and then we could have our classes implement these methods without overriding them. So here's an example. We have this function called fun c. This takes in an integer and outputs an integer and all we're doing is taking in the x and returning it. And we have the freedom to override this default implementation if we want to. 
we could override the function c and just have it return super.func with x inside of it. But this is redundant because we're essentially just redefining the default values that we already have inside of here. You can see that even without overriding this method, if we come up into our main function and we instantiate the class C, we can then call fun C with an integer inside of it. And this will then run our default implementation. So we also mentioned that interfaces can have properties. However, interfaces cannot maintain state. So we don't explicitly put the values inside of our properties in our interface. So say I wanted to add a Boolean value value to our interface A. If I tried to say that, say the Boolean value B is true, you can see that this throws an error and it says property initializers are not allowed in interfaces. You can also see that we have this error with class C and it says class C is not abstract, does not implement abstract member public abstract val B Boolean, which isn't defined inside of the interface int A. We can fix this by putting our B value inside of the constructor for class C. Now, while a property inside of an interface cannot have state, it can have getter and setter. Say we recreate our B Boolean as a var instead of a val. We can set up our getter and we can make it so that it automatically returns true. And then we can set up a setter where we pass in value and then we can say value just equals b. And down inside of our class constructor, all we need to do is change our val into a var and this will then implement it properly. If we want to override the getters and setters inside of an interface, we can do this as well. All we need to do is go inside of the class body, call override on the property, and then after it, we can define our new getters and setters. This getter now returns false instead of true and then the setter sets b equal to not value rather than just b equal to value. Now imagine we have two interfaces and both of them have a method with the same signature. If we implement both of these methods inside of our class, we can point to which interface we're defining. So we can say super of interface A dot fun D for this particular fun D. And this will point to interface A. And say I want to implement the other fun D. I can do this by creating a new method called say fun C. And then inside of the body, I can then point it to super interface B dot fun D. So this is pretty flexible and it can be fairly useful if we have multiple interfaces with similar methods. Let's talk a little bit more explicitly about inheritance in Kotlin. A new class, say a subclass, is created by acquiring an existing class's superclass and its members and perhaps redefining their default implementations. This mechanism is known as inheritance in object-oriented programming. One of the things that makes Kotlin so awesome is that it encompasses both the object object-oriented programming and functional programming paradigms all in one language. So we've already mentioned that by default all base classes in Kotlin implement the any class, with the any type being equivalent to the object type that we have in Java. This any type gives all of our classes by default the following methods, which is equals, hash code, and toString. So our classes don't need to explicitly extend this type. If you don't explicitly specify a class a new class extends, the class extends any implicitly. For this reason, you typically don't need to include this, for instance, inside of your code. So you can see here that I'm extending any with class A. I don't need to do that, obviously. All right, let's consider this basic example. We have class A and then we have class B, which is extending class A. Now this code will not compile because we have this error here. Classes and methods are final by default in Kotlin. In other words, they cannot be extended by default. This was sort of a pragmatic choice made by the fellows over at JetBrains. They realized that it was a best practice for most Java developers to make their classes and methods final by default. And so JetBrains baked this idea into the Kotlin language. To make it so that our class A is not final, we have to add the open modifier. This modifier applies to any superclass property or method that should be overridden by subclasses. We simply put the open modifier before the class keyword and now we have instructed the compiler to allow our A class to be inherited. So we also mentioned that members, aka methods of a Kotlin class, are final by default as well. 
And you can see here that despite having the open class of A, the method that I've written inside of this class of A cannot be overridden by default by class B. To make it so that these members or these methods are not final, we have to use the open modifier as well. Our open class A now has an open function A, and inside of B we override this function A. So by adding the override modifier before the fun keyword, we are able to override this function inside of our B class. Note that if you override a member of, say, a superclass or an interface, the overriding member will also be open by default. And you can see that here when we can extend class B with class C, and now we can automatically override function A. We can still add new functionality to a class even if it is final by using the extension functions that we talked about before. And we can make use of extension properties as well if we want to add properties to a final class. Now let's think about how inheritance affects primary constructors. If our superclass has a primary constructor like this, then any subclass has to call that primary constructor. Our open class B is calling the constructor for A, and we're just putting in A and B, and then inside of our constructor for B, we are defining A as a string and B as an integer. If we want to, say, take our primary constructor and put it into a secondary constructor, we can do this by using the super keyword. So we're extending our super classes constructor by using this super keyword here, and then we are just adding in A string and B as an integer. A fairly nice feature of Kotlin is the type alias modifier. This allows us to create type aliases using primitive types, and even more complex types. So all we're really doing is saying, okay, well, we want to refer to our strings by the type alias of name, and we want to refer to our ints by the type alias of age. So inside of this person data class, we can replace the string calls that we had here and the int calls that we had here with these aliases. First name is a name type, which is pointing to a string, and last name is also a name type, which is pointing to a string. And then we have our age, which is pointing to age, which is also an integer. So this isn't really creating any new types, instead it's just creating an alias for these types. This allows us to make our code a little bit more terse if we want to. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the tutorial, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good day.